Having such a status within Islam, being known for herself rather than her lineage, her father, her husband, etc. What lessons do you think our younger sisters could take from her life as an example, from her modesty, from her teaching, from her socioeconomic works, from her sermons? Where would you recommend that a, a sister or even a brother listening now should go and start to try and better understand who she truly was and what she truly meant to the Muslim Ummah? I think firstly, approachability. I think that's something missing in our communities today. And I think the Father Zara salam, everybody found that she was approachable. Mm. Now someone might say, hold on, let's talk about her knowledge, let's talk about this. No, no. Simple approachability. This is the daughter of the man seen as God's greatest creation and his final messenger. She could easily have stiff upper lip, arrogant, you can't come talk to me, I don't know you. Don't come talk to us if you're not at this level or you're not Book from this family or you're, you know, we have chavs out there like that. Now, with Fadl Zara salam, there's an unbelievable approachability. When you look at the way people talk about someone, those who've lived with them, those who've seen them in their most difficult moments, you realize what they are. You look at the way Sayyidah Fadl talks about Fadl Zara salam, that she would tell me, Fadl, go rest, today's my day. Tell me today. <laughs> I can't imagine someone from a massive, you know, well-known royal family out there. I can't imagine them saying to one of their servants, you know, they have many of these servants, they bring from the Far East, Philippines and Malaysia, Indonesia. Sometimes they bring from Bangladesh. And you see them sometimes you know, running after their fat kids. These guys can produce a football, not a child. It's a, it's a round ball that's walking <laughs> on the earth. And, and you see these poor Far Eastern servants picking them up. Well, I can't pick up someone like that. I'll break my back, sincerely. Mm -hmm. And yet you'll see them picking up these. Now, being mistreated by the kids often Being mistreated, as well. the or kid recently they showed one king of one particular royal family in the Middle East. Mm -hmm who was beating everybody around him. You know, Arab Bedouin is a Bedouin. They remain a dog forever. But when you're looking at Fatima Zahra salam, for her, she is the royalty of this religion. Mm -hmm. But she tells someone like Sayyid al don't worry. Today is my day. Believe you me, there are those out there who do majalis in the honor of Fatima Zahra. They'll have a servant at home. You can never, never will they imagine, listen, that you are going to do it one day and I'll do another. No, impossible. Mm -hmm. Some don't even let them come near them and sit in their gatherings or eat on the same table. Fatwa to Zahra alayhi salam's approachability is something wonderful. Because you can have all the knowledge in the world, but not an approachable person. Abrasive, foul-mouthed. But when Fatima Zahra salam, has all of that, yet Sayyidah Fidda, Asma bint Umais, look at the way she, you know, glosses on the life of Fatima Zahra salam, and constantly in praise of her behavior and her humility. Mm -hmm. That lady who came to ask Fatima Zahra a question about Salah, and I've, I've had these moments where someone says, can I just ask you one question, Sayyidina? And you're like, yeah, yeah, sure. About... 25 minutes later, everybody's asked about 40, 50 questions. Uh, and then someone one says, guys myself. Uh, <laughs> Come up to you, say, no, can you answer this? Yeah. <laughs> so I think when that happens, uh, that lady realizes that I've asked a few questions too many. And she says, I'm sorry that I've asked that many questions. And then she replies with this unbelievable reply. She says that. If, Allah, if someone said to you that if you carry something to the top of that mountain, they'll pay you this many dinar, for mm. example, would you do it? said, yes. said, Allah will reward me with a lot more thawab for answering these questions. In our communities today, sometimes when a revert joins our community, sometimes the approachability factor hurts them because they look around and they're wondering, you know what, I can't really see anyone who's looked at me in a way where they've said, you know what, come welcome, come sit mm. with us. And we actually have groups 
in the Muslim community where if you want to be part of that group, they've got to first rubber stamp you before you can come and sit in their gatherings. And this happens with the brothers and the sisters. Both who claim to love Fatima Sarah alayhi salam, that you know what, I see someone new, I don't go up to them and say, how are you, what's your name, I've not seen you before, is there any way we can help you and your family? Approachability, she's unique in. Secondly, speaking out against the injustice of her time. She could have remained silent. She said that Nisa al me and you have just discussed this. But she speaks louder than the other three. This is something unique. Mm. Sayyidah Khadija spoke out against, but in her own unique Sayyidah Khadija, very, mm. you know, royal-like manner. Mm. And Maryam, in her own way, tried to speak out against the arrogance of some of the clergy of her time. Asiya, it was a one-on-one -on -one battle in reality mm. with Pharaoh. Fatima Zahra, no, I'll take on the establishment. I'm not scared. At the Today, many of our daughters, yeah. Young age as well, Fatima Young Zahra. A lot of old. people don't realize that yeah. they think maybe she was 50, 60, 70, 80 years old. At that young age. Old. Today, many of our daughters, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help them, our sisters, our mothers, they're living at a time where it's so difficult to keep your hijab mm. in terms of your social modesty. And in terms of your physical modesty, the khimar, the head covering. It's so difficult. It really is. For people like myself to come here and sit down and say, oh, you know what? All the sisters should be wearing their head covering. It's easy. It's not easy. It's difficult times. But it's at times like this where you hold on to Fatima. Mm. Because she saw a certain oppression take place. Where all of a sudden, the pre-Islamic Arabian culture of woman not inheriting was now back it was back the arab bedouins were now in power mm. and she could easily stay quiet but no i'm not going to stay quiet i'm going to speak out against injustice because if injustice anywhere as luther king used to say is a threat to justice everywhere. Hmm. Injustice anywhere. Is a threat to justice everywhere. Is a threat to justice everywhere. She would not remain silent. And that brings the anger of those at that time. Hmm. I'm not surprised when I read in Sahih al-Bukhari certain narrations which mention that she wanted a secret burial. She did not want certain people at her funeral because she saw that I spoke out against your oppression, but what you did back to me One was is verbal, the biggest sign of hypocrisy. The other physical. So these two lessons, one a very akhlaqi type lesson, mm -hmm. another one a more social reform type standard that she sets. I think these are two wonderful lessons that we can benefit from her. Inshallah. So what is the reason that, that her burial site is, is hidden out of interest? Well, it's a difficult political time after after the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, his family dies. And I think anyone who out there tries to gloss over this and say everything was rosy, well, you know, it's, it's their day of judgment. I, I don't want to... I don't want to sit here and say that... that they're covering the facts, mm. but I find it amazing that in the books of all Muslims, it mentions who she died angry with, who she didn't want at her funeral, and that she wanted a secret burial. And you'll still find Muslims out there will say that, you know what, nothing really happened. People have disagreements. What did I say early on the show? I said, the Quran said some messengers excel above others, some prophets above others. Why? The Quran doesn't need to say this. I also said that the moment the Quran is saying this, it's giving us an indication that our theologies are built around these mm. principles. And that if the Prophet Muhammad himself, peace be upon his family, says, Fatima is a part of me, whoever angers her, angers me. These are all indicators. Do you know that there were people who knew that it was such a powerful indicator, they started fabricating nonsense 
that the hadith Fatima is a part of me, whoever angers her angers me, is because Imam Ali angered Fatima to Zahra That Imam Ali supposedly went to propose for Juwayriya, the daughter of Abu Jahl. And in so doing, what about the ayah and the anger of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi? And mind you, if you look at the chain of the narrators of that tradition, some of Ali ibn Abi Talib's greatest enemies are all, subhanAllah, in one chain. But when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi is saying, Fatima is a part of me, whoever angers, angers me. Theology is built on this because he's no longer saying my daughter. Mm -hmm. Now it's, and whoever angers me, angers Allah. So for someone to come and tell me, well, Fatima being angry after Rasulullah died, wallah, sometimes you hear the following, listen to the following mm -hmm. reasons. I've got to mention them on air. Sometimes you hear people saying, oh, she died because of depression. <laughs> listen, we've all, we've all had difficult times, mm -hmm. but I don't think it necessarily led to our deaths. And you're telling me, the part of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, who her anger is the anger of Allah dies of depression. Then there's others who are like, well, you know what? She was in a state of grief, but nothing much further. No, no, there are clear traditions that there was an intention to attack the house of Fatima. Some say, but they didn't, did they, didn't they? The names of those involved speak for themselves. Hmm. You've got to be someone who doesn't know the biographies for you to provide a defense for those who are involved. Hmm. Because some of these guys came to Islam by slapping their sisters. Others of them have a track record of killing women. Others are from tribes such as Thaqif and Hawazin and Makhzum. You know, mm -hmm. These are vicious animal tribes who produce some of the most barbaric people. So yeah, it's, it's an extremely sensitive issue. And uh, some would ensure that it shouldn't be narrated uh, because of its sensitivity and because of the bad light it puts certain supposedly great yeah, personalities in. Mm -hmm.